Um, hello and welcome to our summer 2023 Tufts Health Science Pre-College Programs live Q&A. Uh, my name is Tony Gao. I am the Associate Director of Pre-College Programs at Tufts University and along with my colleagues, we are excited to take you through tonight's overview of some of our summer programs. We hope uh, tonight's session will help you learn more about our academically challenging and uniquely rewarding summer programs, mini med school, lab science investigations, adventures in veter veterinary medicine, and tough summer research experience. Not only do we have a great, um, a lot of great information for you tonight, but we are also looking forward to letting you drive the second half of this session by asking questions of our team members. As we talk through each of the programs tonight, please feel free to enter any questions in the Q&A section, and we will keep track to make sure we answer all your questions following the overviews. So with that, let's get started and uh, let's meet the rest of the team for tonight's session. First is the, um, the mini med school team, and I'll turn it over to Professor Barry Jacques to get us started. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you. Um, I'm a... A professor of medical education and my specialty is in immunology. I'm thrilled to have you all here tonight on a Tuesday night uh, to hear about mini medical school. Um, and I'll pass it on to Liz. Hey everyone, I'm Liz. I'm a assistant professor of medical education. Uh, my background's in neuroscience and genetics and uh, excited to have you all here tonight. Uh, Tony? Yes, and uh... As you know, I'm Tony. I'm also uh, one of the program leads for Mini Med School as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Revati Masalamani, and I'm an assistant professor of medical education at the School of Medicine. Um, I am the program director for the Lab Science Investigations course on antimicrobial resistance, and my scientific background is in immunology and microbiology. Really excited to be talking to you today. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Shinier. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Outreach for Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine. And so part of that is overseeing our pre-college and pre-net veterinary programs for our middle school through college age students, in including the, uh, the programs you're going to hear about tonight. Great. Um, and my name is Maggie Tiano. I am a program admin in Tufts Pre-College. Um, unfortunately, our program lead for the Tufts Summer Experience this year has was not able to attend tonight. Um, so I'll be doing a brief overview of that, but if there's any um, more deep content related questions, um, please feel free to send us an email to precollege at tufts.edu and we're happy to um, answer any more specific content related questions. Thanks everyone. So for tonight's agenda, the leads for each program will provide an overview of the program itself. Um, and then after that, we'll walk you through the application process and then wrap it up with the live Q&A. So again, please put any questions you have in, in the Q&A section, and we'll answer them live during the Q&A portion of this webinar. Um, so first up is our mini med school program, and I will now turn it over to my mini med colleagues. All right, um, so we have, this summer we have three different offerings of mini medical school, and all three have the similar goals, which is to learn some medical science, meet like-minded students, network with current medical students and healthcare professionals, develop a sense of belonging in medicine and have a lot of fun. Um, and a key overarching component of all of our programs is that they're instructed by medical students. And usually they're Tufts medical students, rising second year medical students who are the TAs. <clears throat> and in all the programs, we have a two week program we'll talk about in a second, and then two one week programs, which are clinical experience programs. Uh, but in all of them, we have large sessions um, that, are, that, are, that are instructed by um, faculty. And then we have smaller group experiences where you're going to have um, TAs leading the instruction. Um, so careers in medicine, this is our the first program we launched in Mini-Med. Mini -Med. It's a two-week residential or commuter program. Um, in this, there's five major strands, and these strands will be in the other programs as well. One of them are going to be career talks. So we have talks done by multiple uh, people from multiple fields in the healthcare profession. So physicians, vets physicians, assistants, biomedical scientists, and many more. Um, we also hear from folks who um, are on the admissions committees for these different programs, so you can hear about what admissions looks like in those health-related spaces. And then the majority of what we're doing are classroom and clinical, in the classroom and clinical setting. And really, the idea is to give you the perspective of what it feels like to be a medical student. Um, we're going to do a lot of hands-on experiences in the Sim Center. We were actually talking with uh, the, one of the directors of the Sim Center today, working out some details for doing the intubations and the patient simulations and putting in IVs and suturing and so on. 
Um, and then culminating um, throughout the course of this project, you'll meet with a small group of students, three or four, and you'll work on creating short videos on a public health topic of your interest. And you don't need to know anything about videos to do this. We have film and media folk to help with it, and they're really, really cool. And in the end, we celebrate all of those in a big gala. Okay, I'm going to talk about um, mini med school clinical experiences. We have two of these programs, each of them are one week long. And for both of them, uh, it's the same type of content that you would get in the two week careers in medicine program. Uh, it's just condensed, somewhat fewer career talks, uh, with a bigger focus on kind of hands on. Uh, and then you also do a poster presentation instead of a video uh, for your capstone project. Uh, but same kind of same strands, patient case studies, hands-on experiences, anatomy labs, uh, simulation center. There, um, for the first week is going to be a commuter-only program. It's new this year, uh, so this will be focused on students who are local here to the Boston area. Uh, and this is going to be a much smaller group, so you're going to have a more kind of intimate experience. You'll have more um, interactions with faculty like us. Um, and more you know, chances for networking. Uh, this per, this week will also um, have more focus on the Boston Health Sciences campus in, um, in down in Chinatown, Tufts Medical Center area. And then our the last week um, the of Tufts clinical experiences is called medical and dental experiences. This is again that same kind of condensed version of the careers in medicine. Uh, this one has a few extra sessions about dentistry. Um, you'll get to do cool stuff uh, like go into the dental simulation center, um, more kind of like patient simulation scenarios. And uh, but there will still be plenty of emphasis on other medical careers. Um, and this uh, this last week, July 22nd to 26th, has an option for residential. So you'll live, if you want to, you can live uh, on campus. Um, so I'll walk us through the lab science investigations program. Um, so the, the cool thing about this program is it's a research focused program for um, entry level scientists, um, high schoolers. Uh, who have either never had an actual or genuine research experience or have had some version of it and would like to further their interest, their experience and their skills in it. So the nice thing about this program is that everyone that gets accepted into the program works on one theme, which is antimicrobial resistance. This is the emerging public health crisis of uh, that is really going to be of significant importance to us going forward, which is how do we make sure that bacteria that need to be controlled using antibiotics don't develop uncontrolled resistance against antibiotics that are being overused. Um, and so this is really a public health challenge and a medical challenge, um, an environmental challenge. And so it goes under the umbrella of One Health, which is that our health, human health, animals health and the environment's health is all connected. Um, and so it's a great way to really experience research in a setting that gets experts from all of these dimensions, environmental engineers, veterinary uh, clinicians, physicians, epidemiologists talking around this topic. And so you will hear from all of these experts. Um, this program is run through the um, CMAR Center at Tufts, which is the Levi Center for Integrated Management of Antimicrobial Resistance. And a big mission of CMAR is antibiotic stewardship, which means to understand how the use of antibiotics should be regulated at a policy level, as well as at indiv individual levels. So our hope really is that you come into this program, you develop a research project, um, which will involve environmental surveillance um, of soil and water to look for resistance in the soil against antibiotics. And as you're doing that, you're going to be developing some really key lab skills. Um, you'll understand what lab safety is all about. You will understand techniques like PCR, like culturing bacteria. Um, and you're going to experience authentic scientific research as a scientist. And ultimately, you'll be working on a capstone project with a small group of three or four students, which is going to be centered around the issue of an antimicrobial resistance situation somewhere in the world, uh, 
a situation that you will choose. And then you will try to problem solve around it uh, and become ambassadors for effective communication around it. So it's really exciting. And the structure of this program is going to be um, small group work led by teaching assistants who are going to be undergraduates from the Tufts Medford campus. Um, so you really get to work with them very closely, be mentored by them and get to know about their college experiences. They come from many different disciplines. Um, and then you learn from experts, um, faculty, um, physicians, clinicians. So we're really excited to have you and looking forward to the summer. Um, yeah, so we, uh, the Adventures in Veterinary Medicine program is a little bit different in that we uh, host this actually on our Grafton campus, uh, which is just next to Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, we offer two sessions uh, for high school students, but also offer a middle school program for local students and, and a college program for local students. Um, and essentially, it's uh, designed to give students a really in-depth understanding of what veterinary school is going to be. Um, through a mix of um, uh, lectures uh, like that you would have in sort of a seminar kind of format or workshop format um, as part of vet school, but also with lots of like hands-on activities. So uh, we'll be working with um, donated specimens on some um, dissection. I will also do uh, things like reading x-rays and suturing skills and um, uh, analyzing uh, you know, samples from different animals um, as well as sort of things like parasitology and ophthalmology kind of uh, sessions on each of, the, sort of these more focused areas. Our high school program also includes uh, sort of field trips to animal related uh, areas. So our students spend time at the New England Aquarium, um, one of the local zoos, um, as well as uh, a day at the med school. Um, and we also spend um, nearly a full day at a, at a dairy production farm. Um, so students are really learning kind of the full spectrum of what veterinary medicine may be. Um, that it's not all just, you know, helping out with puppies and kittens, but also some intensive work, um, you know, working with larger animals as well. So, um, so yeah. Great, thank you. Um, and so um, our tough summer research experience um, is a six week opportunity um, off of the summer from July 1st to August 9th. Um, it'll be residential, commuter, or virtual, depending on what lab um, the students participate in this year. Um, this year for lab offerings, we have our Discover Pathology Lab for Infectious Research, um, Food is Medicine Institute, and our Children and Community Context Lab are the offerings this year. Um, so through this experience, students will have an opportunity to develop their research skills, hear from industry leaders, um, innovative research, and guest lectures. Um, and throughout the week, students' days will include mentored research time um, with their uh, principal investigators, a journaling club um, with their peers, library seminars, guest presentations, um, and networking sessions with um, classroom assistants um, and some of the lectures that um, attend the lab spaces. Um, students will have an opportunity to not only hone in on lab and research skills, um, but have space to work on this academic journaling um, and have access to campus resources such as our library and our online Tufts databases. Um, all students will actively contribute to the ongoing research projects in their labs um, and learn about research ethics and how to evaluate um, information objectively. So research time will be supplemented with these various afternoon sessions um, and opportunities to experience life at Tufts University and be a student with us for six weeks, which is very exciting. Um, and by the end of the six week program, um, students will have had an opportunity to create and present a poster um, based on a research question that the students will connect with their principal investigator on um, and see what kind of research and um, interesting topics that they find from the labs that they were part of all summer. Great. Well, thank you all so much for that great walkthrough of our health science programs at Tufts Pre College. Um, we'll We'll get to your questions next, so please drop them into the Q&A section if you haven't already. And uh, while you do that, uh, we will discuss one of the most important steps in the process, which is getting ready for the application. So um, first things first, you'll uh, head to our application landing page to register for your account on our, on our website, um, as you see there. You can find that link on all our program websites um, at an apply now with an apply now button. So once you've registered, you can log into the system and start your application. You'll put in some basic personal information, family information, 
and then select your program. Uh, to supplement your application, you'll be asked to provide some contact information, information for a recommender and a school official who will upload your transcript. Some programs may require additional application materials, such as a lab preference or brief personal statement or a level of experience in the particular relevant content area. As part of your application, your parents will also need to fill out a parent permission form and um, your recommender and school official will be prompted to upload your letter of recommendation and your transcript respectively. Once we've received all these materials, uh, we will return your admissions decision within 10 business days. Upon admission, you'll be asked to submit a deposit and some enrollment forms, and then that will be followed by the request for the full, full payment. And then after that, you'll be ready to study with us at Tufts. We will now turn things over to you all for the Q&A portion. So I will um, read out some questions and then um, the, uh, the panelists, the relevant panelists can answer. First question, if my child has already applied, what else needs to be done? Um, I can answer that for you, Tony. Um, so for your students who have already applied to our program, meaning that they've gone through um, answered their essay questions, have reached out to their um, recommenders and their transcript pro providers to make sure that their materials are in. Um, once we have all your materials, including your letter of recommendation, um, as well as your transcript um, within a 10 day turnaround time, um, our application readers would be reviewing your applications um, and create an admissions decision for you. Um, so if you've not heard back from your recommender or your transcript pro provider and still are, have that piece missing, um, we definitely recommend that you reach out um, to those people. Can you explain more about what a capstone project is? So I can, you know, mini med or um, lab science investigations could answer this question. I can answer that, <clears throat> um, at least for mini med. Uh, capstone project is uh, a project that you work on throughout your experience. Um, throughout the two weeks or one week uh, that kind of like demonstrates your mastery um, of the of the things you learned that week. So for um, uh, for the clinical, I'm sorry, for the careers in medicine, the two week program in med school, you make a video about a particular, you pick a, a health topic um, of interest, usually something kind of in the news. Uh, and you make a, a, an informational video about it. Um, and you'll actually be working uh, with TAs who were film students here at Tufts. Um, and you'll work in a group uh, with other students for that. And then for the clinical experiences, you'll spend the week um, working on a, a poster presentation and you'll do present it at the, the last day. Um, and so that'll be about things that you've learned um, or like additional research uh, that you've done on a topic uh, during the, the course of the program. You can see examples of the videos on, on the website as well. Yeah. Yeah. And for the two week program, there's like a little competition on like, which is the best video. So you got to bring it. The vet school has one as well. Our capstone is a little bit more of like a case study. So our students are presented with information about a specific case over the two weeks with us and then working in a small group. Um, they're sort of diagnosing, coming up with a treatment plan, and then sort of presenting on their findings um, during our final session on the last Friday. And for lab science investigations, yeah, the idea, idea of the capstone is really to bring all the learning that you've had over the two-week program, including the lab research skills, and the idea that you are now capable because of what you've learned through the program to be scientific communicators and ambassadors for a, a problem that is global in scale. And so the capstone project is really about identifying a situation of uh, emerging antibiotic resistance threat, for instance, it could be in a cattle farm. And how will you solve that problem talking to the stakeholders, in this case, the farmers or the locals, um, and really coming to solutions in a way that is in the interest of the community at large. So as you can see, it brings in many different skill levels, the research, the understanding, communication, and how to work together to problem solve, which is one of the big goals of LSI. Um, great, so for mini med school, can you tell us more about the specific hands-on experiences um, that are part of mini med school 
And also, um, if I'm really interested in mini med school, should I apply to both uh, careers in medicine and clinical experiences or just one of them? So as far as applying to both, I, I think I, you know, our recommendation is you do one. And I think the question to really consider is the different sort of um, focuses of each of them. Um, you know, the careers in the, the careers in medicine has more talks, a broader array of career experience exposures. Um, the clinical experiences you're going to get a real enrichment and condensed form of that that hands-on experience. So, what are some other examples? You know, and please, you know, chime in, folks. Chime in, <laughs> Liz Dunny. Um, we've got suturing intubation, CPR, setting, you know, splinting. Uh, I don't think we have casting yet, but we may have some casting as well. We have wound packing. Um, dissection. We have dissections. We dissect sheep brains and, and um, hearts. We also see dissections, yeah. examples of human samples as well over video. Um, and um, we have a microbiology lab as well, where you do a common assay that that, that would have take place in a hospital if a sample is sent to figure out which antibiotic to use, which bacteria would be susceptible to which thing. Um, we have, and let's see, anything else? Oh, there's 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 more for sure. We have um, patient case studies as well, where it's more diagnostic. CPR, did we say that? CPR, yeah. And last year, we also had the enhancements with the dental um, programming. Last year, we did casts of, of teeth. Um, I think this year we're actually going to get to do some molds or even some fillings on teeth, which I think is pretty cool too. Great. Um, yeah, so I'll, for now, I'll cycle through to uh, the next one, lab science investigation. So um, the question here for LSI is, are the, are the lessons and lectures led by um, faculty members at Tufts? So yes, all the lectures are led by faculty at Tufts, um, as well as uh, industry leaders, pharmaceutical industry, um, scientists, researchers, um, and as are the labs. So labs are also run by faculty members. Um, the small group work that students do where they are breaking out into groups of three or four, working on their capstones um, or on interpreting data from the labs, uh, et cetera, are facilitated by TAs um, so that the students can work in close proximity with someone who is has gone through this experience is a is a undergrad and can share their college experiences with the students. So it's it's a great time to form a bond and create those networks going forward. Thank you, Dr. Lasomai. Um, so I'll I'll go to um, ABM Adventures in Veterinary Medicine next for this program. Uh, could you talk a bit more about what specific animal experience is required for the program? Um, and additionally, is there an age or um, a year that you think is most appropriate for an applicant to um, enter this program? Sure, yeah. We don't have a specific requirement, much like our veterinary program doesn't have a specific requirement for number of hours or species that students have um, with animals prior to coming into the program. Um, one thing we do like to see, though, is that students have experience working or handling animals, um, whether that's pets or riding horses or volunteering at a shelter or something. We know that this can be challenging for students that are under the age of 18. Uh, very often, you know, shelters and things like that in some states won't allow you to, to, to uh, volunteer. Um, so there's no specific requirement, um, but we do like to see that students kind of have an idea of what they're getting themselves into and kind of what veterinary medicine is. Um, and so that we don't have students, you know, um, sort of getting super grossed out or fainting or anything like that when we kind of get into um, some of the more uh, animal specific stuff. But we, you know, we're, um, we also recognize that some students have access to different things. Uh, based on where they live and, you know, the kind of uh, geographic location of where they are. Um, so uh, I will share, though, that we do want to give, offer this, you know, opportunity to as many students as we have space for um, as a new opportunity. So sometimes we'll have applicants who have done the program before or they've done very comparable programs elsewhere. Um, 
you know, that's not necessarily going to be an advantage for a student coming in if they've done a comparable program somewhere else previously. Um, the um, and then, you know, on the uh, sorry, what was the second part of your question, Tony? What was um, uh, is there a specific age that is oh yes ideal or or preferred for yeah i mean we recognize uh, we're uh, one of the selective programs so um so we recognize it's you know if a student applies as a freshman um you know they we may not have as much space for them um typically uh, we're also part of our application process we're looking specifically for students who um, you know have may have taken biology already in high school so sometimes that doesn't happen in freshman year um, so we are uh, kind of evaluating based on a variety of criteria. I will share that most of our uh, applicants and most of our attendees who have been selected are entering their junior year or entering their senior year um, simply because of some of that criteria um, that they're uh, um, and, that, and some of that also has to do with some age restrictions um, for some of our facilities here. Um, students have to be over the age of uh, 15 to enter a couple of our facilities. Um, so sometimes freshmen aren't quite 15 yet. Um, so that's another kind of consideration that some students might want to make. The advantage, though, is that if you apply as a first year freshman and, and you don't, aren't admitted for some reason, um, you do have you know two, three, four more shots to to come join us in, an, in, a, in a future year. So don't be super discouraged if you're not selected your first time around. Um, if you've got a few more shots at it in future summers. Thanks, John. Um, and I would like to add that um, mini med school does have a minimum age requirement of 16, and that is um, the policy of Tufts Medical School, um, that you have to be 16 years old to, by the start of the program, um, to enter the, the clinical spaces at the medical campus. I will go to a question about TSRE. Uh, and then this is also this also overlaps with the uh, the residential experience. So um, how many students are typically accepted into TSRE? And um, during the six week program, what do students do over the July 4th weekend or holiday? And then more generally, um, what activities are available? to uh, students who live on campus during weekends and evenings? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great question, Tony. Um, so our Tough Summer Research Experience um, is one of our more selective programs um, where each lab, so we have three labs this year, they will only be taking one or two students um, this summer for the six-week program. Um, so if there are also any other programs that you're interested in, we recommend um, that you check out some of our other health and medicine um, opportunities this summer to apply for. Um, <clears throat> so this is, so with these students that will be with us for six weeks, um, yes, you will be a part of um, our cohort over the 4th of July weekend. Um, so for our students that do live on campus with us, um, you'll be living not only with your peers, um, but also a team of residential directors and residential coordinators. Um, so like our residential assistants or RAs in a traditional um, college sense. Um, and those are college age undergraduate students that are so excited for you to live with us safely on campus, but also participate in a lot of fun um, weekend and nightly activities. Um, so nightly activities are often more close to home. So whether that be a movie night in the dormitory, um, they've done organized um, pickup soccer games in the past, um, walks into Davis Square to go to the restaurants or go, there's JP Licks, which is a big ice cream place around here um, that a lot of our students like to go to. Um, and then over the 4th of July weekend last year, we had students go to the Red Sox game. Um, we also had a barbecue and fireworks, um, which was a lot of fun. But even with our two week um, programs, there is a weekend in between where our students will be living on campus with us. Um, so our residential coordinators would be doing a lot of nightly activities as well as a bigger weekend trip. So in the past that's included a trip on the Freedom Trail, um, Codzilla, which is a big boat in Boston, um, a trip to Six Flags. Um, so, and we also love to hear from your students if there's anything that they're really interested in about seeing in Boston. Um, so our residential staff can be prepared and give you an experience that you're really looking forward to while being a student here with us at Tufts. Great, thanks. And um, just to follow up on um, some of the residential questions that are uh, that we're getting, 
Uh, could you talk a little bit more about how the residential life is structured and um, what are some like safety and supervision protocols that, that are um, offered to the students? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a majority of our programs are run on a 9 to 3, 9 to 4, 9 to 5 basis. Um, we want your students to feel like undergraduate students on our campus. So um, part of being a student and being an adult and a college student is setting your alarm to wake up and go to your program, talking to your program instructors to make sure you understand where your first class is um, and getting to the class on time waking up an hour before to go to the dining hall and eat your breakfast um, and kind of getting to that kind of feel of what it would be like to be an independent student on our campus. Um, our students who live in the dormitories with us, um, they'll be paired up with a roommate who is someone in your program so they can start being a buddy um, with you as you're getting used to um, what Tufts campus is like and finding your classes. Um, like I mentioned before, we do have um, a staff of residential directors and residential coordinators that are also there to help you. Um, our students connect with these um, coordinators through an app called Band App, which is a texting application. Um, so students can let their residential coordinators on their floor know where they are and vice versa, um, making sure that our students are feeling safe. Um, we do have opportunities um, for students um, and parents to sign and unsupervised um, off-campus permission slip where students in larger groups would have an opportunity um, to walk towards um, Davis Square, which is um, a shopping center, a square um, near Tufts University where there's a movie theater, restaurants, um, and opportunities for, for shopping um, and students to hang out with their friends. Um, but with this, there are also checkpoints with um, adults in um, undergraduate supervision um, for our students to be connected. Um, it's an optional form, so it does not have to be signed for your parents, meaning that you would just stay on campus and participate in um, completely supervised activities as well. Um, so there are opportunities for our students to connect with these um, residential coordinators as well, um, get to know the campus a little bit, um, and ask them questions about what it's like to be an undergrad student, um, which is pretty cool. So you start getting that kind of feeling of, hey, maybe I do want to go to Tufts and maybe this is the kind of feel that um, I want to be a student. Thanks so much, Maggie. Um, I have a few questions here asking about a sample day-to-day -day schedule. Some of the programs have those on their individual pages on the site too, like AVM yeah. has got a sample. AVM has a sample schedule on our page, so you can view kind of what the day-to-day -day is going to be uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah, yeah so you can check our website. Some of the programs do have sort of like a sample schedule up um on the pages for each program and um as we get closer to the start of programming we'll send you uh much more detailed information about what a day to what the day-to-day -day schedule looks like for each individual program um so i have uh multiple people asking specifically about the course requirements or the admissions criteria for lab science investigations so um dr Masala Mani, if you wanted to address that. Yes, thanks, Dr. Gao. So um, basically, lab science investigations is, is, is a cool way for high schoolers or ninth to 12th graders who, haven't ex who have not experienced research at, in an extensive way or have had a, an entry level research experience but want more. So we're really making the criteria for entry pretty flexible. But what we want is one year of biology. Um, in their pocket before they come to the summer program because we're going to be talking about molecular biology about genes about uh, genes that develop mutations for resistance so it really will be important for them to have some background understanding so one year of biology um, before they come in for the summer um, i also think that there was a question about the admission criteria for the program so again we're really looking for students who are interested in research and perhaps excited or stimulated by the idea of a, working on a emerging public health threat, which is antimicrobial resistance, uh, and really wanting to be contributors to this problem. So an excitement for research, an excitement for learning about science and about how cross-disciplinary cross research happens. Um, so there's an, an, an essay or a small uh, statement that we ask of students. So we'd like um, 
that statement to really clarify their interest in the research aspect of the program. Thank you very much. And a question about tuition. Those differ uh, by program, and you can find that information on each of the pages for the program on our on the pre-college programs website. Could could uh, one of the mini med school people uh, talk more about the the case studies? So we have we have two two larger types of case studies. Okay, we have one we have a number of cases that are in a in a common format for patient diagnos diagnosis. So the idea is that in a small group with your medical student TA, you're going to be giving information about a character and a story and a case, um, and you're going to be going through that story trying to diagnose the patient and to learn about some important infectious diseases along the way, um, and then about halfway through the case, you'll get a second piece of information that will help you move forward um, and better understand um, diagnosis and treatment for the patient. Um, we, the second format of case we have is part of our lab. So the lab I mentioned before that has antibiotic resistance, antibiotic susceptibility testing, it's a hands-on lab, but it also has a case. It's called the tragic case of Stan. And there's a character we follow throughout that. And it's a four-day hands-on lab with a character and a story that goes along with it as well. Thanks. Yeah, that was a great, great overview of, of what you can expect from, from the mini-med program. I have a question about um, commuter students. So can commuter students take the bus from Medford to travel with residential students? And the answer is yes. You can definitely take the, the, take the bus to and from, Med, oh, sorry, from and to Medford to wherever you might be going. So for example, the Grafton campus, um, because AVM, is basically, for most of the program days, they're traveling to Grafton. Um, a question that we did have was, um, where do students on, in the veterinary medicine program live if they're residential? Um, so our veterinary medicine program students will live on the Medford campus. Um, there will be buses available for the students to travel together um, as a cohort um, from Medford to the days that they're going to Grafton. Um, so this means that our veterinary medicine students will be able to participate in the weekend and nightly activities um, and also meet students from other programs that are going on at the same time. So if you're in the vet med program, you have a, a friend in the mini med school program, um, you'd still be able to see each other on the weekends and the night. Great. And um, there's a question, uh, would you discourage students from applying for multiple programs? And, and, and I would say generally the answer is no. Um, with a, an occasional caveat, as you know, we mentioned earlier about um, making a choice between the different mini med school sessions and figuring out which one is right for you. But generally, generally speaking, um, for and this is a broader question for you know all of our pre college programs. Yeah. Obviously, if there's a scheduling conflict, then um, you wouldn't be able to attend multiple programs that occur over the same time frame. But um, otherwise, we encourage all of our potential um, students to pursue their interests. So with that, I think we will wrap it up for tonight. Thank you for all of your excellent questions. And if you have any other questions, you can obviously reach out to um, the individual programs or our um, pre-college office. And um, if you think of anything else, you can always contact us. Um, please follow us on your favorite social media channels to stay up to date with what is new with pre-college programs at Tufts. And thanks again to everyone for joining tonight. Um, and we're looking to hopefully meeting all of you on campus or virtually this summer. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night.